Hey, Snooky Learns Better Day. Another distro for you. Right, a couple of days ago, we had the new update for the Raspberry Pi operating system Raspberry going over to Stretch. Okay, so there's lots of new features there for you. <clears throat> but I thought I'd show you. This is Raspbian x86. This is not the one I showed you in May. Okay, this is a completely different one. This is by the guys who made the actual Raspbian distro. Okay, and it comes with some certain features that you won't find a lot of others. So, shall I show you? Yeah, of course, I'm going to show you. The install is easy. Remember, it is Debian based anyway. It comes with a Debian back package. So, it's, that's everything it should do. Okay. Desktop, all you normally get is the wastebasket, okay? I've put these on myself, these icons. They're nice, bright, and large. You can make them whatever size you want to. The installing software is really, really simple and easy. This is the sort of distro I would say go and put on your really old laptop to make it work correctly. Now, I'll show you what's in the menu, basically, <clears throat> on this particular version, okay? Under programming, we get quite a bit more this time. You get Java, <coughs> Genie for editing, Greenfoot, Python, Python 3, and two versions of Scratch. Now, if you use Scratch before, this is the old-fashioned version, okay? Scratch 1. Been out a very long time. It will do the job, of course, but it's not the most current version. If you had the Raspberry Pi before, you would have to go and use the online version using Chromium. But this time, we have got a proper install. So if I go back, Program, and Scratch 2. Now, this looks slightly different from the one you normally get, but it's not that much difference, really. It's just different colours at the top, really. And this is what you get. Now, this makes it easier when you want to start using Scratch for newer projects, okay? Because then we can use the Raspberry Pi in this as well to do stuff with your Pi. Oh, yeah. So it's nice and easy. I'm not going to show you how to use Scratch. If you want me to do it, I'll do a couple of things for you. No big deal. But there's lots of stuff out there on the net anyway, okay? No, his name is Scratch the Cat, by the way, in case you didn't know. All right, okay. Ah. <sighs> We also get this Sense Hat emulator. This is one of the hats you can get for the Pi for temperature, pressure, and humidity. And you can play it a little bit before you go and program your Pi with this hat. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? I like it anyway. I think I've got I think I've got one. I haven't actually used it yet. That's how lazy I am. We also got Sonic Pi for making music from your Pi. But you can do this on x86 here because it's an ordinary one. Ordinary. Then you've got Thony Python. That's one of the new ones, I think, and I haven't used it yet, so I'll have to give that a go. Under Office, you get the full LibreOffice suite. Okay, this is LibreOffice Writer. Just wait five, four, three, oh, we're there already. There you go, nice and quick. As you can see, we're using hardly any resources. This is a quad-core machine, by the way. So it's not using anything, so it'll go really, really well on a single core, to be honest with you, isn't it? But on the internet, we get Chromium as your default browser, okay? I've put Firefox in. Now, there is a big difference. So you want to go to the tube and play some videos back. So if I go to the tube, if I've spot that right, yeah, of course I have. And we go to YouTube. Just go there quickly. Here we go. Not too bad, is it? Okay. And I put me in. And I'll just quickly play one of my videos. That one will do. That's no big deal. This one will do. Now you can't hear the audio because I'm not letting you. Okay. But it plays back fine. Now you can see here it's using around about. 25 to 35 of resources because you really do really 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 do need proprietary drivers to get that down a bit when using chromium it will use less resources than when you're using firefox for the simple reason chromium on raspberry is optimized for it and you get a bit of a blocker to block some rubbish out basically i know i know you get no games of stats but you do get python games these are really really old school games i'm going to leave that as is and these are really, really old ones. Okay, like Squirrel, Wormy, a bit like Snake, a bit like Reversey, four in a row, the usual. You can install games if you want to. Yes, you can install Steam as well, but you will need a proprietary driver, okay? To get it. Well, yeah, you will do to play a top game, basically, end of the day. Under accessories, you get the usual archiver, calculator, a file manager, an image viewer, a PDF viewer, I'll open it up for you just to see your PDFs. It's all basic stuff, really, at the end of the day. What else down there? A task manager. No, I don't like this one. But I'm only using 97 megabytes of my RAM. Okay, So I'm not using anything. If I go down further to System Tools, I've installed HTOP, which I've done via the terminal, and that's better. You can see a bit more there, can't we? You can see, you can see a lot more at the end of the day. 97 to 98 meg of RAM. So if you've got an old machine with only 256 or 512, it's going to run no problems. You can just give a bit of swap, of course. 
Okay, understand the video, I've installed Clementine. Excuse me, just had a cup of tea. <clears throat> and there it is, up there in my menu. I'll click on it. I've not added any music to it yet, but I can tell you for a fact it plays super fine and normal as any other Linux distribution. It's just really, really nice to use. I think it is anyway. I do like it, but then again, I use it on the Pi and I've got used to it from the old version, to be honest with you. Desktop preferences, my phone going off. I'll just change that for you. What does that look like? We'll open that. Yeah, that's okay. As you can see the icons a bit better there. You can change the icons if you so wish to do so. Yeah. It comes with Bluetooth, if you've got Bluetooth on your board, of course. Wireless LAN is no problem whatsoever. You can mount stuff. Basically, you can do whatever you want to with this distribution. Whatever you want to. I know that very much. Under preferences here, we can add and remove software, which is basically this. I'll show it for you. It's the old school add and remove software. So you can get whatever you want in there. So, for instance, I could put in Abbey Word. I'll just do it for you. See how it comes out. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there it is. Okay. So I'll install it for you to just show you how easy it is. Okay. It wants my password. And I've not changed it from the default yet. So it's loading it. Download all my packages. And there we go. Super duper. Almost done. I'll just finish my tea. Because it's not drink a cock yet, is it really? A bit early for that. Mmm. I can't be the bit of English breakfast tea. Okay, and that's installed now. Wasn't that nice and easy? So I'll just click OK. I'll go back to Office. And there's Abby Word that we just installed. Bomb. We're done. That's how easy it is, okay? I've also down here installed Synaptic Package Manager as well. So that was my password as well. And there we go. So if you wanted to install Zero AD, which I would recommend actually, it's quite a nice little game. You can do. And anything you would do with Synaptic anyway, okay? And that's basically it. Apart from preferences, I've just been there. Appearance settings. I'll quickly go there for you. So you can change the desktop, fill the screen with the image, menu bar, top, bottom, middle, bottom, middle, middle, top, top, middle, bottom, and system. So the fonts on Robo to Light 12. I can change the colour if I want to, but I'm not going to bother. We'll cancel there. On the whole, if you want to go and give it a go, I would thoroughly recommend it because it's really, really nice, easy to use, and something different. And if you haven't actually got a Raspberry Pi, you want to know what you're going to be working with, well, easy peasy. You can install it to a USB thumb drive if you want to, or to a mechanical hard drive, or a SSD if you wanted to. That'd really fly on SSD, wouldn't it? Think about it. Oh, yeah. That's all I've got to say. I really like it. Go and give it a download. It's a rather large download. It's over a gig. But it is worth it, okay? It is worth it. Lovely. Sneaky Linux Ganner. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.